Alrighty, hacksters, I am very excited today to unbox the sensor watch from Joey Castillo, aka Oddly Specific Objects. This is something that I interviewed Joey about months ago, and uh, I'm very excited that he's released it on Crowd Supply. Uh, you can find both these links in the description below. You have 17 days left if you want to get your own. This thing is an amazing bridge between retro technology and modern DIY hardware culture. Oh, it's so cool. And I'm going to put it together today uh, with a special twist. So um, I have the package. I got a little overexcited ripping it open. So uh, there's actually some of the papers are a little bit torn. Um, We've got the sensor watch quick start guide that I'm going to be following. Let me double check that my audio is nice. Yes, good. Okay. And uh, so we have this quick start guide that has a QR code on it and all these full color diagrams, uh, including a full, uh, full diagram. Beautiful. And a note from Joey. Thanks so much for all your support. Keep being awesome, Joey. Thank you, Joey. Um, I actually missed the window. There's a couple of different versions of this board that you can get. And one of them is the classic sort of green circuit board with a green and red LED. And the other one is a blue version with a blue and red LED. And you can guess why I just absolutely had to like try and get one of the blue ones and he graciously sent me one and I'm so appreciative. Uh, the other twist here is that I got one of these Casio F91W watches um, to make sure that uh, I would have something to put it in, and I got a gold tone one. So we're going to have a blue and gold one. Um, yeah, very excited. So we're going to try and put this together. But first, uh, let's get a close-up on that circuit board. Uh, there's a question from Tariq. Alex, how are you, my friend? Thank you, Tariq. Uh, you may notice that I have a bit of congestion. I've actually got the thing, and uh, it's my last day of isolation, and I'm feeling okay. So we're going to go through this, and it's just really a bright spot in my week, which has been a little special. Ooh, let's do a close-up on this. And thank you, Xiao, for uh, jumping in and saying that sound and visual are okay. So, or maybe it would be Z. Um, wow, so small. I wonder if I can get a better uh, focus on this. I've got some new camera software, and it's been a little bit dodgy, so we'll see. But maybe we can get a better visual for you. Oh, no, that's worse. Ah, <laughs> hmm. oh, yes, there we go. Cool. So, oddly specific objects. We're going to go even closer. Yes. There we go. Uh, that's his logo there at the bottom. And we have all these beautiful labels. A key feature of Joey's projects is that he just, they're sort of self-documenting. So he prints the info about them right on the board. And this is something that I've copied for a project or two of mine. It says, important, uh, remove battery before using USB. So all kinds of useful information. Just in case you lose the documentation, you can always look at the board itself and figure out what's going on. Very cool. And then on the other side, here's that interface with the Casio hardware. And even on this little flex cable, it he's printed uh, which traces go to the temperature and GPIO sensor board. Um, oh, I see. No, that that is the temperature and GPIO sensor board. Uh, you've got a zero thermistor, a two temperature and sen temperature sensor, a one, a four SDA, SCL test points. Cool. And then a little uh, flip up connector for that flex cable, which probably has the sensors mounted over here. Cool. And we'll see in a second how this goes into the board. It's all in that guide that he gave me. So. I'm going to put this back on far away focus and we're going to take a look at that documentation. So here's our diagram. We've got the Sam L22 controller, microcontroller. He's very excited about this chip. 
And there's a lot of stuff in the crowd supply page about this. So if you want to know anything more about this, he's got not only a very detailed crowd supply page, but also a ton of extra information and updates. And he's got this quick start guide here. I'm going to assume that it's programmed with something right out of the box because Joey's very thorough. <laughs> There's also a guide to getting code onto the watch, which I've only torn a little bit in my excitement. Um, the connector is delicate, do not bend it. Ensure that there's no battery attached to the watch before plugging into the USB. It's in the instructions, it's on the board, you have basically no excuse. <laughs> Components, the dual color LED. It is a dual color LED, interesting. Interestingly, it says in both cases, red is the less power efficient color to use. For general and illumination, you can extend your battery life by using either the blue or the green LED. That's really interesting, because obviously usually red is the lower power one, and therefore, you know, that's the one that stays on when your the rest of your lights go out. But um, in this case, I guess they've got a high value resistor on there or something, and so it's like the less power efficient one. Or maybe it's just very bright. Um... And then, you know, more stuff that you could read for yourself. Um, I'll ooh, I'll put this up so you can scan to get a video of the procedure if you want. Um, or you can just keep watching because we're going to do it right now. And then again, uh, there's links in the description below down there <laughs> if you want to follow along. And we'll look at some more of the other stuff. So Joey's written a bunch of different apps for this, including um, all kinds of stuff listed on the product page um but there's other ones that he hasn't mentioned like a mars clock <laughs> and uh astronomical coordinates all this cool stuff that you just like you really should go follow him on his social media accounts especially on twitter because there's a lot there's so much extra cool stuff that's going in here he's constantly experimenting and updating this stuff uh and you'll you'll definitely catch much more value if you look at all of that so I used to have one of these, and I know about, uh, let's pull this in a little more, mm -mm. about taking the back off. So let's jump right in. Am I getting too arrogant? Is this hubris? Hmm. Let me make sure that this screwdriver is going to work with, well with this. I have some extras in different sizes, but I might just need to press really hard. I don't want to strip that out, so I'm going to try and find a screwdriver that's a little bit closer and for that yes uh, uh david is jumping in to say the top part of the usb connector indeed i did point that out uh and it does say on the usb connector itself to disconnect the battery before plugging it into usb so i've got this nice i fix it set of screwdrivers i got recently for uh, doing electronic repairs. And let's find which of these Phillips heads is going to be the best match here. Or actually, you know, these slots go all the way to the edge, so it could be that a flat head would work best. Oh, no, but this is a nice match. What is this one? It is a size 2. But why does it say it's a triangle? Very strange. It must be a J00. So that's what we're working with, a J00 uh, Phillips head. In fact, oh, it does say that on the side, yes. So for anyone else wondering which screwdriver to use, that is the bit I'm using. And let's just give this some, some pressure and a slow turn. There we go. Trying not to strip that. And again, I'm just following the quick start guide that was in the package that Joey sent. Doop. This is indeed an F91W, uh, and you can get the gold tone ones. I got this one on eBay for about $16. Three. Maybe I should have some music going. I'm uh, talking less than usual because of the congestion. <laughs> okay, so let's get this off. Yep, here we go. So 
We've removed the four screws from the back of the watch. We're going to remove the back plate and a rubber gasket, then remove the watch movement from the case. Back plate, rubber gasket. Maybe I should have a different utensil for this. But I can also use my tiny little screwdriver here. This is a good little tiny one for wedging stuff. It's a little stubborn, just trying to be gentle here. Not poke anything that shouldn't be poked, not to scar the plastic. Come here. Maybe I'll use a knife. <laughs> Dude says we can make our own music in the comments. Do 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 do. <laughs> oh no, Adam! How could you? Oh, that's terrible. Uh, David's reminded me of that. Um, is it Tchaikovsky symphony? I think it's B flat. Major or a minor? It's like doo 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 doo. La da 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 dum da 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 dum. <laughs> Remove the watch measurement from the case. Okay, come on, come on out of there, old guy. Hmm. Okay, so there's some little spots here where I can kind of pry, getting some movement there. This is not the uh most sensitive instrument, but it's very nice. It's a little gerber knife. Extremely aesthetic. Okay, there we go. Very um, technical and uh, official removal tool. Okay, so here's our watch movement. So what do we do next? Unclip the metal retainer from the white plastic enclosure. So that's gonna be this guy. We're just going to gently work these clips free. Again, I'm just using a, you know, don't use a big razor blade if you're not comfortable with them. I'm being very careful not to apply too much pressure in any direction. Oh, we got one to unclip. <laughs> and I'm really just trying to, uh, you know, keep my fingers out of the way. If you're not an adult, please do not use a knife. Go get an adult or use a blunt screwdriver or something. I would dig out another one of those. Uh, I fix it screwdrivers, but I want to leave this bit in. But they've got some really tiny little flathead screwdrivers in there. You can see how this has come apart now. Um, in fact, let's fix the focus on this and get you a little bit closer. How's that? Yes. Okay. So now we see. That's very nice. Coming off. The side is cl still clipped in. <laughs> I'm going to continue to keep my fingers out of the way. Kind of stabilize. Work this off. A little bit of pressure at a time. Not going to put my fingers there. There we go. It makes... The nicest tiny little click here when it comes off. It's like ASMR. There we go. So I've unclipped the metal retainer from the white plastic enclosure. I'm going to keep this in, let's see, which orientation? Um, hmm. Well, there's only three buttons. I want to make sure that I put this back on the same way. I think that this uh, spring clip was at the bottom. So I'm going to put that at the bottom. And I think that that zebra connector is supposed to be at the top. So this is oriented the same way. OK. Remove the battery and battery clip, then remove the green F91W circuit board. 
So keeping everything in the same orientation, maybe y'all can help me remember the spring retainer or the spring clip is at the bottom. How are you held in there? Maybe it's just attached to a battery connector. It's definitely attached on there. These are final bits that we need. Here is the original board. And here's our new one. Side to side. Now, how are you attached? Battery clip. This almost just seems to be glued on there with some kind of conductive glue. Indeed. Okay. It's like a little uh, sticky conductive tape. <laughs> Sorry for the sniffling. So I'm going to guess that's the battery clip. It says, clip the battery clip into the back battery clip area on the back of the sensor watch board. Okay, yeah. I see where we're going here. So this might be tack soldered down. Oh no, it's just clipped in. Okay, we can just probably pry this up with my fingernails. Good thing I didn't, haha, <laughs> yeah, there we go. Good thing I didn't clip these recently. There we go. Okay, so here's the old one. Here's the new one. Gonna stick that in there. Trying not to bend those clips. Okay, there we go. Install the sensor watch board and battery in the white plastic enclosure. Oh, everyone, it's getting real. So, oh, <laughs> see how uh, there's this weird flexible rubbery band here that's actually conductive and it's got a bunch of different contacts that are going to touch on this board where you see those little basically like a little zebra crossing. That's a weird thing to say. Only really people in Britain say zebra crossing, but they'd say it zebra. And in the US we call it, what do we call it, just a crosswalk? Um, okay, so put those in a white plastic enclosure, clip the board and battery into the white plastic enclosure using the metal retainer. Oh, it's go time, guys. Okay. I'm going to use this same adhesive to stick this down and try to get it in the same vague position. It was kind of up near the top and I don't want it to contact those contacts at the bottom there. So I'm going to try and stick it there. Hopefully that's good. Alrighty. Here we go. Hopefully that's good positioning. Oh yeah, and you can kind of see here as well, that the shape of the battery is near the top there. So I might even be able to push that a little higher. Oop. <laughs> it's very springy. Let's try that. How is that for positioning? Yeah, that's pretty good. Oh, that's, that's clipping right on. Come on. Gotta make sure that uh, this actually goes over the little the little clip spots. Do it. Ah, there we go. There we go, and there we go. Ha ha. Oh, uh, you know, maybe that battery needs to be a little bit further down. Is that too high up? That might be a little bit too high up. Let's pull it down a little bit. Which means I have to get this off again. <laughs> I imagine Joey has sunk countless hours into this precise task. But since there's that pressure on it from the battery underneath, it's a little easier. Come on. Come on. 
I know you can do this. There we go. So a little bit lower, maybe. But just a tiny bit. Still avoiding those little copper contacts. Okay, how's this? Much happier. There we go. Okay, so we put the sensor watch board and battery into the white plastic enclosure and clipped it into the white plastic enclosure using the metal retainer. Reinstall the watch movement in the watch case along with the rubber gasket. Okay, I'm going to polish off the little display on here. Oh, look, it's working! Ah! Okay, I'm going to polish off the display first because I know that um, I touched this a bunch with my fingers. Polish, polish, polish. Very official um, display polishing shirt material. Stick that in there. The nice thing about this is that you don't have to worry about buttons. Uh, often when you're putting a watch together... Oh, did I speak too soon? <laughs> no, it's, it's working fine. Um, you'll have to play all kinds of games with the little button springs to try and get everything to go together. Um, and it can be really a pain, but this one's going pretty okay. Um, I'm just gonna try and make sure that this spring is retracted a little bit. Oh, no, it's stuck out, curses. Okay, come back out of there. Come out. Let's get you in the right place. There you go. And get the other ones in the right place, too. Ah! Haha! -ha. Okay. Let's make sure that's not sticking up too much. Really glad I didn't trim my nails. Uh, and then we screw the back plate. Oh, and the, the rubber gasket. Yes. This probably helps with uh, water resistance. We are so close. So close. Let's give you a close-up of that. Oh, <laughs> thank you, David. <laughs> Extremely good. Also, a, a newspaper, if, you, if you're speaking it instead of uh, writing it. They now use screws so small that you need a microscope to see what bit is needed to undo them. Yeah. Uh, I often just go, you know, based on feel. I'll just sort of stick it in the, the um, connector and wiggle it around a little bit and kind of hope and wait for the one that feels good. Watch out for the part that goes ping and flies across the room. Yeah, okay. Cool. So let's finish this up. There needs to be a, an iconic Casio uh, one LED in the top corner that overbrightens just that corner. <laughs> Truth. Um, I didn't bring out my personal old school Casio um, with the, uh, the light up, but it's true. That's how they went. Just that, that light just really wails on that one corner. Now, interesting. I would have expected this to line up with the battery, but it doesn't. Ooh, I should have cleaned out the interior as well. Let's pop that out real quick. Should I? I'm sure I'm going to get this open again, and it's bothering me that I've got... You can see a little speck of white there in the corner. Just, we'll both try and ignore that for now, and I promise you that next time I open this up, which I will, um, to program it, I will get that little speck out. I wiped off the display, but I didn't think about that part. Chris is... Uh, well, I promise both of us I'll get it back in there again. And I will clean it out. Uh, once I close this up, I'm going to turn that LED on. And I'm very excited about it. So I'm... Uh, since I'm going into plastic here, I'm doing the classic thing where you sort of Go to the left for a little while until you feel it kind of seat in there. There we go. And then you go to the right, and that prevents cross-threading. There we are. And here we go. 
<laughs> Adam Bryant says, also a sunburnt penguin. Yes, that's true. In terms of what's black and white and red all over. There we go. Nice little seat there. I'm just going to loosen this, one up, loosen this one up so that uh I can tighten them all down at kind of the same time. Not put any weird strains on there. Okay. Counterclockwise or anti-clockwise until I feel it seat in there and then tighten it down. Sometimes it takes a few turns before I'm really certain. There we go. All right, now let's do them all down. Oh, this is so exciting. The weird thing is, it's almost underwhelming um, that it looks so normal. Like, it looks just the same as the regular display. Uh, ooh, we've got a little blue light in there. Come on. Comes on for just a moment. Yes. Stealth mode. That's gorgeous. Haha. <laughs> okay, and that is our Casio. F91W mod with the sensor watch circuit board from Joey Castillo with a gold tone one that I got off eBay for about $16. Incredible. Oh yeah, uh, I was testing a soft potentiometer and it burned. And I actually still need to go back and revisit that and redo that video because that was, uh, you know, not at all was I, what I was expecting. And it was, uh, I think, due to my inexperience with soft pots. It was, like, basically my first time using one of those. But yeah. Yes, this one is enhanced. It's very exciting. So, um, extremely excited to have finally put this together. I've been hearing so much about this sensor watch from Joey, you know, over in our interview, which you can find linked below, and, you know, from his social media accounts and posts over the last few months. If you go find him on uh, Twitter, I'll link that in the description below as well. I should have put that up before, but I was really trying to like fit this in while I while I have the energy today. Um, and yeah. Oh, um, I'm really into watches recently. And so there's also some other interesting ones. Let's take a quick look at the product page again. Um, and so here's the uh, official product page on crowd supply. You can still support this and get your own for 17 more days. The green one, the blue ones are less all gone, but the green ones are still very much available. And, you know, there is the classic blue border on this one, which matches it as well. And all those updates that I was talking about, um, there's a really interesting one that he posted today called How We Got to Blinky, a tour of the circuit board, which I haven't read yet, but I'm going to immediately. Um, so there's all these different functions. Uh, the community sensor watch firmware called Movement has several useful watch faces already. The clock face, the world clock face for any number of time zones around the world, beat time, which I love decimal time. Uh, I tend to use this other one called Ke, which is a, an old Chinese system of measuring time. And basically you've got 100 units of 14.4 minutes a day. Uh, it's very useful. Uh, you can do one-time one time passwords, which we talked about in our interview. He has a really interesting breakdown, actually, also of how the display is put together in here and how, you know, you can't actually control all the apparent segments of the display individually because they did some really cool efficiency stuff on the programming side. And temperature face, temperature log face, day one face that lets you count days from your birth date, 
uh, to watch the days of your life tick by, or presumably from, you know, any other date, because it's not going to know. It doesn't know. Does it know when I was born? Uh, there are others, stopwatch, pulsometer, battery, battery voltage, but the most important thing isn't the apps. The important thing is that it's open source and easily hackable. Do you want an astronomy face that can show you moon phase and product satellite passes? A transit face with train arrivals, etc. Oh my gosh, so many things. There's some more cool information about the watch itself, and he goes deep on this microchip SAM L22 chip. Um, very interesting stuff here. And yeah, oh, you should just really just dig into this. Uh, he also compares it to Watchy, Pine Time, and Bangle JS, three other interesting watches. This one is an e paper uh, or e ink customizable hardware watch with a little vibration motor in there. Um, Pine Time and Bangle JS. There's also one called Open Smartwatch, which we unboxed on this channel a while ago uh, by Paul's 3D Things. And that's in a little 3D printed enclosure. It's got all kinds of, um, you know, I, I do a little teardown on here where you can see the differences between the two. Uh, and it's got a little round LCD. It's very cute. Um, also completely open. Lots of cool watches happening right now. Oh, and I have to show you one other one. Uh, I've been working with this uh, Casio or Cardio. There's Casio and Cardio. Um, and this one is out of battery. Oh, it's not out of battery. This is a badge from the uh chaos communication camp 2019 which i've just created this uh wristband for in the quantum filament this new quantum filament from uh matter hackers which is beautiful and you can get this like two-tone effect so this is the green and blue one uh it's all about weird diy smart watches and the funny thing is i was just planning to build my own one um that's more of well, I'll save that for later. It's different than all these and less useful, but uh, it'll be extremely aesthetic. <laughs> so um, follow all these projects. <clears throat> Pardon. Uh, you can find the three um, linked in the comparison section on the Crowd Supply page. You can find Open Smartwatch Unboxing on our YouTube channel. I'll link that below as well. And uh, of course, follow the Sensor Watch project. Follow Joey on social media for more up-to-the-minute updates and different weird little projects he does with it. Go get your own. You have 17 days left. And uh, stay tuned for more about whatever weird stuff I dream up, if you want. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see if there's any... Um... <laughs> there's this, oh, no, I have all the watches in those tabs. Oh, no, or oh, yes. Uh, the all-black original. That's awesome. Uh, Brandon has also been thinking about building some kind of a watch lately. It's it's in the air, I'm telling you. Uh, the TV remote Casio was so cool. Now you can code it yourself. TV remote Casio! That was a thing? Well, uh, again, this is expandable. Not just, you know, you can't... You can not only program it yourself, but you can also expand it with hardware. So you saw that little clip-on little um, flex cable with... Uh, I think it was a temperature sensor and stuff on there. Uh, you could add your own little uh, hardware add-on to do whatever, to do an infrared um, remote control or whatever. Johnny will be so upset. No pink LED. Who's Johnny? I should know, probably, but I don't. <laughs> um, all right, cool. Two trees have a 3D filament that is luminous. I was thinking of trying it. Uh, I'm really curious what you mean by luminous. Is it glow in the dark? I've seen a few different glow in the dark filaments and they're really fun. Um, yeah. So it was the thing, CMD40. Uh, I guess that's the remote one. Wow, like a command watch? It sounds amazing. Uh, I will check that out. Johnny Bergdahl is the one who likes pink stuff, I guess. Cool, well, uh, yes, Simon does mean glow in the dark. Awesome comment section today. It's really fun to hear from you all. I've been so isolated for the past week. Uh, I'm going to go rest up and try to heal. Um, thanks, all, uh, as always, for joining, and uh, hack on. Have a great weekend. <laughs>